Hello, I'm Christopher Mose. And I'm Sabine Schoenberg here with another edition of Smart, Healthy and Green News. Let's start today with a lesson from Sabine's life. You learned something a little bit tragic with your television recently, didn't you? Yeah, we learned it the hard way. So what I didn't know is that uh, I really should put a surge protector on my television. So we know surge protection is a really good thing for computers and other devices, and we probably have many. I have my computers all on surge protection, but I didn't realize that little USB cable in the back of my television was causing me a problem. It blew out the whole motherboard, even though the television was turned off during a thunderstorm. That's another new one. I always thought if you turn off the devices, you're good to go. Not so. I learned it the hard way. <laughs> so in a recent article that we published on speensnewhouse.com, and you can go online to check it out, we did look at a couple different surge protectors that we particularly liked, largely because they covered the whole spectrum of the type of protection you might need in your house, and they're different sizes as well. The first one is really that all-encompassing one. It's a great one for behind the television where you have the electrical outlet, you have your coaxial cable for the cable connection, you might have internet connection with an ethernet cord, or even if you have a landline phone, they have those as well. Sounds complicated, but it's actually really not. It's really a device about the size, very flat, fits really neatly behind your TV. So. Sounds painless, but do it. It's 30 bucks and easy to put in. And great investment at great such investment. a cheap price. Yeah. The other two devices that we looked at really were more around for you know local needs. So they would have your electrical outlet as um, with surge protection as well as USB plugins. So these are great for a location where you might be charging your cell phone, charging a tablet, or maybe just where you might need to plug in real quick to use your laptop in the living room. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you will probably charge your phone over several hours and you probably are not thinking, oh my God, bad weather is coming or it may not have anything to do with weather. You may just have a jolt from your utility company and that'll take out your phone just because it happens to be in charging mode hooked up to the system. So really good idea to really prepare yourself for that. And then the third one, which Christopher also put on the site, I really love the idea that we should take that with us for travel. A little unit, unit that you can plug in wherever you might be because that's probably the place you least know what the electrical system really provides you. So to have that little device to go with you on your, in your travel bag, I think it's ideal. It's a great, great concept. So next up, we wanted to talk about Wi-Fi development. So one of the things we've talked about quite frequently is the challenges in Wi-Fi connectivity as we're continuing to bring on more smart home devices and more you know, iPads, phones, laptops, everything, streaming games, it's all going online now. So it was an interesting article on some research that's happening at MIT in cooperation with the Department of Defense that could be boosting our Wi-Fi output by 330%. That's a game changer. Think about it, 330%. It's not just a marginal upgrade, that's a step function change. And I can think of convention halls, any large gathering places where people are constantly using their phones or on Wi-Fi, this is gonna unclog the entire situation. So I hope it's gonna come to pass. MIT and scientists are working on it and I bet you this has legs. I hope it's gonna be fast. So we'll keep an eye on that development as it continues to evolve. Finally, we've got some fresh research from the real estate market. Turns out smart home investments are really paying off. Yeah, so there was a study recently done by Cedia and Coldwell Banker. What I love about it is it's actually a very broad sample. Normally you have 2,000, 3,000 households sampled. This is 22,000. And the findings point in one very clear direction, and that is people are looking at smart home technology as a value enhancement for the home. They gave specific examples. If there are two homes that are identical and you have smart tech in one versus the other, people are gonna buy the one with the smart tech. That's a change. I'm not sure the answer would have been that three, three years ago, five years ago. So very important to pay attention to that. Of course, the younger the buyer, the more first time home buyers, younger is coming in, the more they're gonna be looking for just that, the smart home tech they're used to, their phones and doing everything there. So really do think about, you have to replace a thermostat, maybe you reach for that smart thermostat. It's really all about making these upgrades because at the end of the day, think about what are the lifestyle enhancing upgrades. Those are the ones you wanna go for. 
Great, so take a look when you're out in the stores. These little smart home upgrades could really pay off in the long run. Put your toe in the water and you will want more. I guarantee it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our recent project, The Greenwich House. You can find more information on what we talked about today at sabinesnewhouse.com.